So how do we become this immune system as opposed to the opposite of the immune system, which would be to create anger in people because you're not, because you're saying one thing, but you're not demonstrating that. So that's what I'm going to try to talk about. Dig down for that courage. John 16, and the voice says, in this world, you'll be plagued with times of trouble, but you need not fear. I have triumphed over this corrupt world order. <laughs> Hallelujah. We know that's right. And yes, if people see that that's happening in you, they're going to want to have what you have. So the greatest witness is not sermons that you speak. It's the way you live your life, right? That's how I got saved, not through a sermon, by the demonstration of the peace of God that my mother had. Uh, she had witness to me, yes, but what closed the deal was I knew she was tapped into a different source of power than I had, and I needed what she had, or I might not still be here. So thank you, Mom. Rest in peace. <laughs> Jesus, I'm just going to read a little commentary here. It says he, he warns his followers of the mistreatment that they're going to have, okay? Now, nobody here probably likes being mistreated for being a Christian. Nobody likes being persecuted. But there is a point where you have to push back, right? If you get pushed, you got to push back. And this is what I believe in. It's a free, last time I checked, it's still a free country, Right? And if, and if I say something that you don't like, sorry, but we're still entitled to free speech. Okay? And look, I didn't start the conversation. You asked me, and I'm just telling you what I believe, and I believe what the book says. Now, I know there's a wide range of people that say they believe what the book says, and they're not all in agreement either, but look, there is going to be times if you take a stand for righteousness, the enemy doesn't like it, and it's going to stir that hornet's nest, and you need to have your hazmat suit on to protect yourself. <laughs> So he warns, he says, in this world, you'll be plagued by times of trouble, but don't fear, I've triumphed over the world, over the corrupt world order. He disarms fears by noting the most important things, and, and this commentator says, if the Spirit of God is within you, there's no reason to fear. Hallelujah. I mean, you know, I would add, obviously, the Word of God mixed with the Spirit in us is, is the full formula that we need. And in fact, the church will thrive under persecution. That's always been the case throughout all of history. You know that the church is thriving because even in spite of being brought into the Colosseum to be martyred, Christianity grew. Every time the enemy thought he could use the persecution to stop the church, and you know that from the book of Acts too, right? They started praying, thank you, Lord, that we were worthy to be beaten for your name. <laughs> That's an unusual thing to thank him for. So what is it about the church that allows us to be strengthened under persecution is that we know whose we are and who, whom we have believed. And he who began a good work in me is able to complete it. And I will press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling that I will attain that thing that he chose me for, that, that the reason that he has me here. And frankly, you know, we're all here right now. This is our turn. You're not going to come back 100 years later and say, oh, I wish I was there then. No, you're here now. <laughs> so the idea is, help me, Lord, to know what my mission is, and then help me complete my mission. So I'm going to just throw in a, a book title here called Anti-Fragile. If you're on Wall Street, you might have read that book. It was written by the same author that wrote a book called The Black Swan, uh, Nassim Taleb. And he's a brilliant guy. It's not the easiest read, but he, he introduces a new word into the culture that's very much pertinent to Christians, right? Because anti-fragile, I'll, I'll unpack it a little bit here. If you look at these three pictures, you can think of a wine glass. That's fragile. If, if you drop it, it'll break. A sword is, is resilient or robust, to use their language. If you dropped it, it doesn't break. It's something you can use. But, but anti-fragile is actually something that gets stronger when it gets stressed. And the reason that you see that, that chain there is that's the chromosome. That's to represent our immune system. The only way your immune system is strengthened is by stressing it. And you think hiding behind a mask is going to strengthen your immune system. Sorry, that ain't true. And I think there's enough studies out right now that show if you had the actual virus and you beat it, you have a stronger immune system than what the vaccine would give you. Well, doesn't that make sense? It didn't kill 100% of the people that got it. Killed 
less than 1% of the people that got it, depending on what age bracket you were in, right? And again, we're not trying to dictate to anybody what you should or shouldn't do. I'll write you a letter if you want a letter for religious exemption. I've written a bunch of them. And there really does seem to be an increase in the number of requests that are coming in. So look, that would create a bunch of stress right there. Guess what? Stress lowers your immune system. <laughs> I mean, really, we, like the world wasn't hard enough. Now I gotta be threatened with being fired. So that little top part, I don't know if you could read all that up there, but like again, if, if something's fragile, that means it's damaged by disorder, to use their words, or stress. If you're resilient, you're not affected by it, but if you're anti-fragile, you actually get stronger when you get stressed. So tough times don't last, but tough people do. That was the world saying. So we need to be an anti-fragile Christian. We know who we have believed. We're, we're standing firm on the rock of our salvation, right? Those people that are persecuting me right now may not agree with me. I'm going to try to speak the truth in love. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to renounce my faith, okay? That's my first identity is as a Christian. Son and daughter of a living God. So let's keep looking at a few more verses. It says in uh, prior to our text verse, which was 35, 32 says, Don't you remember those days? right after the light shined in your hearts. And you know, most people are, are witnessing the most right after they get saved, right? Because the people that meet you are like, what happened to you? You don't even look like the same person. Oh my God, I got saved. I found Jesus. I saw the light, <laughs> right? And, and they're very enthusiastic because they just got delivered from some drug addiction or whatever. And God came through for them and they're excited about it. And when you first see that light, another translation says when you were illuminated don't you remember those days it's the writer saying right after you that light shined you endured a great marathon season of suffering that's a good use of language isn't it hardships yet you stood your ground and if you don't leave with anything else today that's what I'm telling you to do stand your ground stand your ground you got the backing of 2,000 years of truth right in this book right here and if you need help that's normal we all need help you need people to come alongside you and pray with you. And, and, you know, often people will call me way before COVID. They would call me and say, oh, I'm dealing with this thing on my job. What would you do? How could you handle this? And we would pray together. And, and they would come back and thank me later, right? Because we need that. Just let somebody else into your world to give you advice that you trust. You endured a great marathon season of suffering hardships, yet you stood your ground. At times you were publicly and shamefully mistreated, being persecuted for your faith. Then at other times you stood side by side with those who preach a message of hope. You sympathize with those in prison. I'm telling you, this is a very convicting portion of scripture right here. Because Hebrews 10 is right before Hebrews 11. Wow, pastor, that's deep. Because, you know, Hebrews 11 is the hall of faith, right? So he's talking really about faith even in chapter 10, too. It's just he, he, gets, he starts naming people specifically by faith Abraham, by faith Moses, right? Right down the line. But this is just speaking to the general crowd. When you first got saved, you endured some hardships and you stood your ground. And you even sympathized with those in prison. How about this one? And when all your belongings were confiscated. Easy to pass over that line. It must not mean that. They would let their, all their goods be confiscated? You accepted that violation with joy. Sorry, I'm going to go slow. It's painful. <laughs> Convinced that you possess a treasure growing in heaven that can never be taken away from you. <laughs> That's what standing your ground means. You could charge all the bluster you want at me right now. I know where I'm going. And even if you took my life, I'm still going to a better place. That's what my mother said when she had the car accident. I mean, a lot of you are new, but she flipped her car over. It was a terrible thing that happened. And, uh, and, and the has I'm sorry, the, the 911 guys came and showed up. And they're cutting out, you know, cutting a hole because her car was flipped over and she's upside down. And they're like, lady, are you okay? And she's like, yep. <laughs> I'm a Christian, and if this is my time, I know where I'm going. That's called passing the test right there. And they said, Rev, you know, we never saw anybody do that. Most people are freaking out. 
So look, you know, she knew she possessed a treasure that was growing in heaven that could never be taken away from her. Can we just think about that for a minute? Like that's really the drive to take a stand is because this life is just a partial picture. It's not the whole picture. We get to spend eternity with Christ, not just spend it, but rule and reign with him for eternity. So when that's your driver every morning when you get up, it's like, yeah, you know, it is a little tough out there, but I don't mind taking a stand for truth. Somebody took a stand for truth in my life, and my life completely changed because of that. Much for the better, I could tell you.